When there's an abortion, there are two victims. Uh, obviously, the unborn child life who is, is snuffed out before they really have an opportunity to come and, you know, exist, uh, experience life as we all do. They're alive, but they n aren't necessarily conscious, obviously, and, and so miss out on 60, 70, 80, 90, maybe plus uh, years of life. But the mother is also a victim, and I've had many uh, women who, who uh, have had abortions and ultimately later on because of so much trauma they've had over their lives and dealing with it psychologically have become strongly pro-life themselves, and I've met them at many, uh, many, many different pro-life events. Um, and, and I also want to uh, thank all those students and teachers and parents and clergy uh, who will be once again here this year uh, uh, marching uh, for the cause of life, and, and this happens uh, every year. Um, doesn't get a lot of attention by the media, unfortunately. Oftentimes there'll be a dozen or a couple of dozen protesters and, and they'll have equal coverage to the 100,000 or more pro-life folks that'll be here. It's, it's a disgrace that that happens, but I've seen it literally um, over the years happen. Um, and I want to thank my colleague uh, Brad Wenstrup. He and I together will be um, joining with those pro-life uh, folks uh, uh, tomorrow, and we'll have at least a 1,000 or so from our area, um, and, and our folks will be coming from Cincinnati and from Hamilton and Warren counties back in, in Ohio, and I want to thank them for coming. Uh, and as you mentioned, um, uh, Chris, I uh, uh, have been, was involved and have been involved in my 23 years here in, in Congress. In fact, I wanted to get on the Judiciary Committee because I knew that was the committee where a lot of pro-life legislation originates. And so working my way up on that committee, I chaired the Constitution Subcommittee and introduced two pieces of pro-life legislation that became law. One was the uh, Born Alive Infant Protection Act. Um, we had people who had worked in abortion uh, mills uh, who uh, would come in and they'd say they saw instances where uh, a baby would be unexpectedly born alive, a, a later term abortion, and they were found in a sink, in a closet, in a soiled utility area, uh, and, and weren't getting any kind of uh, what we would basically uh, give the humane treatment to animals. Uh, human beings at, at an early stage of life were just being left left there. Um, so now, as a result of that little bill, which President Bush signed into law, they have to at least get dignity. Uh, they don't have to take extraordinary measures to keep them alive, but they at least have some human dignity. And then following up from that was the bill that we mentioned, the ban on partial birth abortion, a particularly gruesome uh, form of abortion, which is now banned. We think 30,000 or so a year don't happen. However, that, that's the good news. The bad news is all abortions are pretty horrific, whether they use some salt solution or whether they're literally dismembered and pulled out piece by piece. They're, they're all horrible, um, whatever stage uh, they are, because they're snuffing out that life. And I want to thank some of my colleagues for promoting additional legislation. Uh, for example, the pain capable uh, which uh, essentially says if the baby can experience pain, which we think is around 20 uh, weeks, um, that, uh, that you can't go beyond that. Most of us say not at earlier stages uh, as well, but at least by that stage, uh, or when there's a heartbeat, um, that we should also, uh, if you detect a heartbeat, protect that, that child. And we ought to protect all these children. Um, and, and I'll just conclude with this. Um, Roe v. Wade happened uh, on uh, January 22nd, uh, 1973. That was the date that decision came out. The January 22nd is always kind of a special date, and that's when this, you know, the, the people are coming up for that date. Uh, that's the day I was born. Uh, my birthday is January 22nd. That was my 20th birthday in 1973 because I was born in 53. But um, what I every day on my every, when my birthday comes around, I always think of all of those millions of children. We think about 61 million now. Uh, whose mothers made a different decision. And so they've not experienced the life that we all have been given the opportunity. So uh, let's, let's do everything we can to protect those innocent unborn lives. And again, thank you very much, uh, Congressman Smith, for your hard work in this area and all the other members. Involved. Thank you, Mr. Chevitt.